Hello and welcome to my podcast, Conversations with Cornelius, where I, Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan, discuss, chat and hypothesize on all things from fatherhood, marriage, comedy and everything else in between. From time to time, there will be special guests, but mostly it's going to be me and some regular contributors, including my main squeeze, Noel Patricia O'Sullivan, a.k.a. The Wife. So sit back, relax and enjoy Conversations with Cornelius. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cornelius. I'm Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan, and uh, I'm in the John Hume room. And this is, uh, is this, this is a very special podcast. This is going to be the very first podcast that I put up on my YouTube channel. I think I have four subscribers at the moment. Um, five now. Oh, make that five. High five. Yeah, just high fived uh, this week's guest. But um, yeah, I'm going to try and do this a little bit more this year and uh, see how it goes. Mm. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a great idea. I think, you know, I think this this video, uh, social media thing, I think it's got a future. Do you think? Yeah, I think video has a future. Do you think the internet is going to last? Uh, I think it has a huge future, a huge potential. Okay, you heard yeah. it here first. Would you invest in shares of the internet? Of the internet? Yeah. Uh, I'd see a little bit how it works out, you know. If I if I could get you 10 shares right now, mm. 100 euros a share, 1,000 mm. euros, cash money. Of the company, the internet. The internet. <laughs> <laughs> would you take Would you take them? I think it's, a, I think it's one for the future. I don't think the internet... Maybe, maybe I'll take it. Okay. Let's we'll see, let's we'll see. I think actually, like, post is a huge future. Post? Post has a huge future. As letters, in letters? Letters, packets. Ooh. Man, you've missed a boat there. <laughs> <laughs> you've missed a boat. Post has been around. Oh, I found these ages. things the other days. They're called newspapers, man. <laughs> yeah, no, newspapers are around. <laughs> You you're regressing. You're regressing. I think. Mm. Yeah, you're regressing. Just leading into the generational topic for later. Mm. <laughs> We're in the John Hume War Room, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the corner of the John Hume War Room, sitting next to a uh, Spidey, little spider plant, and a lamp, uh, a lamp shade, uh, that is doing a great job of shading the light mm. from uh, the bulb, which is in <laughs> the lamp. <laughs> um, <laughs> There may have been a jazz cigarette uh, <laughs> ingested. <laughs> so get ready for a very light-hearted episode. <laughs> this is this is a light-hearted uh, first oh, episode. So it might get very serious, like halfway through. You know, you never know. You never know. You can never tell. You never you can tell. Never tell. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, I, I haven't brought you onto the stage yet, and I'm not yet because I have a little bit of intro. But uh, you and I often disagree on stuff. That's one thing that I, I do think. Um, yeah, I think people in general do. I disagree with a lot of people. I'm pretty disagreeable. You, uh, but then you've got this really kind of affable, genial uh, way about you. Because I don't so mind, so like, when I disagree with people, you know. <laughs> I think it's completely fine. People put too much stock into it. Like, yeah. who cares? They're putting stock into what? Into disagreements. People are like, oh, yeah, we disagree on something. So this guy's a dickhead. It's like, no. Oh, yeah, they formed their identity yeah. on their it's opinions. Like, like, who cares? <laughs> Do you know what? People <laughs> fucking care, man. And I'm telling you, I wish I didn't care, but I do yeah. deeply. Um, the house here, guys, at home is full of sickness. I'm all right. I'm just after getting over sick. My, uh, like two or three weeks have been sick. But Noel now is sick. And the boys are sick. And um, yeah, it's just, yeah, what, what can you do? What can we do? How can we get, how, like, what, what do you do to ward off sickness? Uh, have you any good habits? I drink hot tea. Yeah, well, we all like <laughs> like with milk and stuff. Yeah, just a little, like, little cup of tea. I don't really drink tea except when I'm sick. And then it's really nice. And you find out that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't heal me, but it's, it's nice. Oh, well, Usually right, I just sweat it out. I just lay in back bed until I feel better and then I'm fine. All right. Okay. Get a strong immune system. You tea. Know. Uh, <laughs> that's the, that's the, if you're, if you're sick in any way, shape or form, just have a cup of tea. That is this guy's, yeah. that's this guy's advice. Unless if you are um, a child, then you should probably go see a doctor. Yeah. Or do a shot of vodka. W- a shot of vodka yeah. if you're a child. Yeah, that would help. It cleanses the body. Okay, okay. Dude, 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome to the stage the only funny German, Daniel Lucas. I hope you have no sponsors for this podcast. There is I, I lost my sponsor giving, this time last yeah, year. Giving people drinks to give them drinks to children. Um, that's that's a great topic on a podcast. They'll mm -hmm. definitely get your sponsors. Well, how old were you when you had your first alcohol? Oh, I think it was like fourteen. Yeah, okay. I only had like a sip of a beer though, and then I had my first proper drinking when I was sixteen, at someone's birthday, and I got ludicrously drunk. Yeah, the most drunk I have ever been in my life because the first time I've drank, and we were doing like we were doing like four shots of like vodka and roll, like shh, shh, shh. fuck. Off. Yeah, <laughs> we were like still didn't know what I would do, so we we're like, oh, fucking drink. Did you get bottle. sick? Oh, I got so sick. Yeah, I got so sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 14 though that's 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 the like 16 so for your first kind of session is it like yeah yeah i think i probably was around the same age which is late for ireland like kind of 15 16 but i think we were all i was always flirting with having a drink as a 10 or an 11 year old so yeah taking sips of, of of beer out of my parents bottles at christmas and stuff like that but um no 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 it's more the mary jane now these days that uh, keeps me keeps me sane Although I do still enjoy <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely mix, alcohol and weed, isn't it? I haven't been that drunk ever since then, to be honest. Really? I did it like once and got completely, absolutely hammered. And then I think it's wasted my tolerance for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, you, you, you're, you're a, a man in his 20s. You're mm. like... A, like you're sociable like I've you're been blackout drunk many times I've been like completely rancid but I've never been that drunk again in my life yeah but blackout drunk is fairly fucking yeah drunk, that's like how much more drunk could you have been <laughs> than blackout drunk oh no I was only blacked out that day I wasn't too bad <laughs> it was a grand but, but when you're blackout drunk you're still like on autopilot so you, you're still moving along like you know that was yeah. the only time I was so drunk I just passed out I was yeah. like where was <laughs> done I think if I'm to comp if I have anything comparable I remember Ballyclaw won a North Cork final one time. Ooh. Right? Ooh. And I got unbelievably drunk. And I woke up in a single bed in a house that I didn't know. <laughs> with like a, like a child's room. Like, do you know what I mean? I was maybe 26, 27. And I was like, what the fuck? With all my clothes on me, you know? And looked at my watch. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And went downstairs and it was a friend of mine. Uh, who brought me home and put me into his house but I had no recollection of how I got there yeah. and to this day I still don't know how I got in there how I got there how I how I, where the night ended and when, where, when the morning started I, man I had so many like during college I had so many nights where it would be like <coughs> have another drink have another drink and then one more drink and then boom I'm waking up in my bed you know yeah. like just like instantly it's crazy I'm so glad I'm not doing that that's bad by the way don't do that don't don't do that when you're like a 21 year college student because fucking then you're an idiot and you're gonna do it but don't do it after oh I forgot this is being filmed now we yeah. should be looking at this. should I be looking no no you can look at me you can look at camera you can look at the light yeah. you can look at the fern but it's not a fern it's a spider spider plant spider plant yeah, yeah. yeah. Colin said this is a homage to between two ferns a homage to between we got two one ferns. spider <laughs> So I only had I couldn't <laughs> afford a fern, so I just got like a spider plant, and um, but anyway, look, it is what it is. And I also, I just realised that there's people that are listening to this as well. Yeah. So if we're talking about what things look. Oh like. yes. So for people listening, there's a spider plant next. Keynes, <laughs> <laughs> you haven't understood that by it's context clues. It's a jazz clues. cigarette. <laughs> it's a jazz cigarette. Smoke it if you want, but what'll happen to you is you won't know what you're talking about five minutes later. Yes, Should we talk about the trending topics? Uh, no, I want to talk about trend? the double show. Oh, we're talking. Oh, yeah, let's oh, yeah. do that first. Let's You're do that first. You looking at trending topics? I don't want you to be looking. I didn't at look at. I didn't look at them. I didn't okay. look at them. I didn't peek anything. Because I, I need your kind of. I need you to be, you know, present when we're talking about them. Yeah, I know. It said. Uh, I, I read all your notes. You've read my notes. Mm -hmm. Um, we did a Coco. Oh, so I just want to talk about the Coco Club at the moment, right? So um, that's a trending topic, right? That is not a trending topic. <laughs> that is too popular for yeah, trending. It's too popular. Yeah, <laughs> it's just mainstream. You know, yeah. trending it. comes and goes. Coco is eternal. <laughs> and uh, but we had a double show this week in Coco Club, and we Killian Sunderman down like this big online comedian, and we did an early and a late show, and my fucking god, was it fun? Yeah, wasn't it good fun, yeah, man? It was really good. Yeah, like we d the early show, like it, it was, I don't know, it was just something like there was like we'd 60 odd people in for the mm. early show and the room was rammed and the v vibe was bloody 
like you could feel it, but it was like half six. Yeah. <laughs> That's I looked at my fo my my phone. I was like, it's half six. That was the was the easiest hosting job I ever did. Like, yeah. I think only at like seven seven eight minutes because they were like just like fucking warm. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. They were <laughs> loving it. Man. Nothing more to do. They yet. were loving it, and like. What what blew my mind was half fucking six. Yeah. People are happy now to come out and ha and do you know what I was thinking about it? It's a great time to have a show. Half yeah. six. Go out, go to the show, have a drink, watch some comedy for an hour, and then go for a bite to eat. I think earlier is always a little better because Ireland uh, everything closes so early, you know. Like if someone wants to like, because a lot of Irish people stay out long after a show. They see a show and then they stay out for a few miles afterwards. And in Ireland, if you want to do that, everything closes at like half past two. Yeah. Right. So the later your show ends, the less you're gonna go to get to go out and drink. And mm. then, you know, people love love drinking, as we did, as actually discussed earlier. And actually, now did you talk about drinking? There were fucking people plastered at the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you were at the show, nice one. <laughs> Shout out to uh, whoever it was that kept leaving every ten minutes and came back. Out to I don't the know what you're doing. No, 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 no. I shouldn't. I. I they have a pretty good working theory what's going on but I shouldn't say this on the podcast because we're talking about audience members want to be nice yeah well, look don't want to talk, uh, don't, don't wanna, don't no, wanna talk with them do you know now that you're holding my crystal there right yeah okay and that you when you hold someone else's crystals first of all you need to ask permission to hold crystals oh sorry right it's okay you didn't sorry know. you didn't know you didn't know but you know when you hold a crystal right the, the thought behind it is that any energy that's inside in that crystal which would be mostly my energy right okay you're getting that energy but not only that you're putting your energy into it so there's an energy ex it's like we have we're having cosmic sex when you're holding my crystals uh, and for me to touch this now right you've just touched that right so it's like i'm inside you there now mm -hmm. <laughs> brilliant the second i started picking that up you know i started feeling a lot more sensitive like <laughs> like a lot easier to offend suddenly you know that's <laughs> But that's that is actually a thing, and it's the moonlight at the moment. You can clean the energy and clean them, put them in the moonlight. So Ooh. let's put them out into the moonlight. There, yeah, you gotta get some moon water, man. You gotta get that moon water. What, how, what's moon water, man? And you never heard about the moon water. No? That's another one of those things the the uh, the hippie white girls like that you were trying to emulate here. <laughs> you call me a hippie white girl. You're a bit of a hippie white girl. Yeah, okay. You're a bit of a, you like meditation, you like crystals. Oh, yeah, you gotta okay. like moon water when I tell you about I fucking this. Fucking already like the name. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more about moon water because uh, at the moment. I'm drinking this shit, dude. If you'd be like, a, if you'd be like a 23 year old girl right now, you'd be having like big hippie rugs hanging up your walls. Yeah. You'd have like glass things. You'd fuck anyone who looks like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still the same. <laughs> if you look like dad, I just want to have fuck. I want to fuck you. <laughs> Moonwater. Job at the, the least. Moonwater is uh, <laughs> what 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 people like that do is they take a bit of water and during a full moon they put it out overnight and right. then the water is supposed to absorb the energy of the moon. Then it's moon water, <laughs> and then you and can what, drink what it. You can it? rub it on your skin. I don't know what people do with it. I fucking love it. Yeah. Do you know what? There's no scientific evidence or anything like that, but I <laughs> love it. <laughs> I'm into it. So I'm going to be washing these in moonlight soon enough. When so I think I missed if there was a full moon there. There was there, yeah. And uh, I forgot. Well, I kind of remembered, but it was. I was like, Ugh, I'll just do it the next full moon. It's like shower, you know. Oh, yeah, I'll have a shower next week. Yeah. I use moon water for my bong exclusive. <laughs> 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 no, it's a moon bong, dude. You don't oh get man, it. This is good. <laughs> yeah, that's the moon water. That's the moon water. How do it you gets think? You super high. How do you think it got that high? <laughs> <laughs> the double shows, though. What? Tell me. What, like, what it's was great. It? It's great. Sorry, I got a tangent. It was fantastic. It was so that's fun. That's because you were fucking my crystals, man. Yeah, I was fucking your crystals. Yeah. It's the perfect hole in here, right there. Yeah. Uh, the Dow show, fantastic! Yeah, <laughs> I think I think the f one of the most fun shows I've done so far. Really fun. Yeah. And uh, Killian Sunderman is a great dude. Shout out Killian Sunderman. Killian Sunderman was brilliant. Great dude. Um. Yeah. No. So I suppose uh, cl thanks for asking. Anyway, f physically I'm not feeling great. Thanks for asking. Mm. Um. I'm. I'm. Uh, Any time. I asked this, this question is that every week I have someone on the podcast. They always ask me how I'm doing physically, mentally, and spiritually. And then thank you for asking me. And. Um, Physically, I'm. I, I'll tell you. I'm gonna hit. You, I'm gonna reverse the question to you now in a minute, right? How are you feeling physically? <laughs> you pretty good. Worked out yesterday. Happy oh. about that. What did you? Do? How did? What did you work out? <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to get back into working out. I uh, I have a um, fifty, not fifteen, fifteen kilogram weight at home, like one of those that you. Kettlebell. The, the, not the kettlebell, the big ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I just do exercises with that. I've got 
they're I think they're fives. Ah, oh, that's the kettlebells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you call them. The weights on the with the the long stick Bar- and there's a weight on each oh side. Barbell kind of a thing. Yeah, and you can push it up. Oh and yeah. I do like chest presses. I do. I forgot what James James has the fucking sorted my whole training plan out for me pretty much. Shout out, shout to out, James, shout out James. I have no idea about this. He just goes do this for a little while and then you do this. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking no weights. Problem. There's a good feel good after weights, isn't there? I must get into weights. It's it takes no time. It legit takes like twenty minutes of my day at most. It's really quick. Yeah. Uh, you don't get a huge sweat of it, even if you do it really intensely. You don't get you get way less of a sweat than when you're running. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. Great stuff, man. I heavily recommend it. Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. I'm sold. So yeah. So physically, me. I'm. I need to start doing something now like that. Hmm. So I'm gonna start walk. Well, I do a bit of walking. All right. Uh, I'm into the old sauna and all that kind of carry on, but I think I need to move a little bit more in 2023 than I've been moving. Yeah. Just, I think you feel better when you're stronger and fitter anyway, don't you? Like yeah, definitely. And in our industry, for those of you who don't know, guys, Dan here is Dan Lucas, the only funny German. You'll mm. find him online at the only funny German. He's a comedian and um, uh, like uh, runs Coco with myself. And um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant guy. But we live sedentary lives if we if we it's very easy to live sedentary lives what does that mean like lives where we do fuck all just eating and <laughs> more m- going yeah, to work and definitely sitting, sitting at home watching netflix playing video games yeah that's me anyway like that's me like play with my kids is literally the only thing that they I can do. they can very easily like on a weekend it could turn into doing a show uh, having a few drinks after the show, having too many drinks after the show, waking up at like three in the afternoon the next day, uh, like quickly grabbing something to eat and going to the next show, you know, and that's yeah. bad. That's you always always have to avoid that. Yeah, for me, it's like sometimes on a Sunday, I'll wake up on a Sunday and like you could be working Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, and even like ne- this year now, I'm doing mon- I'll be doing Mondays with the podcast as well, with the new podcast Three by mm-hmm. the Lee, and you're just fucking wrecked. You just want to just do nothing. But like it's on those days if you get up and move. That's the weird thing about exercise, isn't it? The more you do, the more energy you get, even though you're losing energy. Yeah, doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's you true. Know? It's so weird. Like, um, f- uh, yeah, mentally though. Thanks for asking, man. Mentally, How are you mentally? Uh, fucking um, good. How are you mentally? Great. Oh, yeah. Nice. So you're a little bit better now. Right? Yeah. Right. A little bit. I'm going to change oh, yeah. my answer to not that good now. Oh, a huge bit, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> how are you do spiritually? Is that uh, the next one? Oh, that'll be the next one. But uh. I want to... How do you... How are I just wanted to ask so you can't do the oh, joke again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, listen, do you know what? Thank you, thank you for asking me, man. No worries. But I'm just going to get back to the mentally bit. But I'll, I'll answer that in a second if you don't mind. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a real professional podcast here. Listen to me. Your your mental health, what do you do to maintain... If your, your natural reaction there is great, and I'll tell you now, right? I think you're a great positive person, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Every time I meet you, you're you're in good form. Even if things are going bad, you're in mm. good form, which is not the way I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're always a t- terrible form. You're, 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 you're a pretty form. positive guy, I think. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, a, I'm positive. But I, I have to work on it. But I think it comes easily or, e- or easier to you. It just appears to be anyway. I, I deal with my demons like everyone else. So I just... Um, kind of do it alone <laughs> you don't post about it yeah I just kind of I, I have like very few friends that I talk about sh- sh- shit with and it gets really dark and that's like yeah. that does it for me really I don't really carry it into the outside world I love it yeah. I love it so you're just you've got like a kind of a cohort of friends mm. and you just tell you you just yeah. talk to each other that is very Gen Z. <laughs> it's, it's healthy, you know? Yeah. It's healthy. It's very like, good. When I get together with my friends, it's like, oh, you're a fat cunt. <laughs> uh, who are you, skinny bastard? Oh, there's a bit of that as well, like, but y- you keep the balance. Yeah, you keep balance the balance. Is th- like more vodka and Red Bull and <laughs> hurling and football matches <laughs> and uh, more insults. But then there's, there's, there are, I'd always come away from those days feeling like it was a bit of crack as well. Yeah, but but even, even those lads, the lads are like extremely like, whoa, ray, ray. Like once you get them, if they're like really honest and down to earth to you, they sometimes have the darkest shit to say, you know? Mm. Like they're sometimes the ones that are going through the most. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to ask you about your dark shit now, but this is the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what I will do, right, is spiritually, you asked me there earlier on how, mm. I, how I was doing spiritually and thanks for asking it, right? And you're touching my crystals there again without permission. No, I'm sorry, sorry. So like spiritually, no, I'll tell you how I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be I like pick. You're just fingering my rock. <laughs> if I finger your rock, is this okay? That's not okay. Take <laughs> your finger out of my rock. <laughs> Gen X is so sensitive, man. Um, Snowflake generation. I, do you believe in God? <laughs> um, pff, 
this is a difficult question. Mm, I am no. I am agnostic, I'd say. I'm not atheist, but I'm agnostic. So so agnostic, uh, by my definition of it, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that like you're spiritual uh, as opposed to be- believing in a definitive... Like, right, Catholic is the way. There's a fellow up in the sky. He's called God. He's got a beard. Uh, you, you don't have to be spiritual. Be agnostic just means you uh, you are separate from institutional religion. You just don't you just don't care. Atheist is you actively against it. You're actively against the belief. You think that be- that that belief is stupid as atheist, Can and then definition agnostic. Of, agnosti- of, of of agnostic again. That you just you're outside of the institutional religion. You don't want to deal with it. That's not none of your concern. You can be your own spirituality in your free time. You can do your thing here. You can do your thing there. Yeah, but you don't yeah. want to belong to any church or any religion so path. You've so known. organized religion. You're, you're like that's what I was saying. So yeah. organized religion. But like, but it also implies that you have belief. No, it doesn't. You can also just have no belief. So, do you have any belief? <sighs> I don't really know. I uh, don't really find. S- I don't find any. S- what do you call it? I don't find any uh, safety in in that. Okay. I don't find. I don't I get anything out of it. I I have no safety in it either. Mm. I, I I get that. I think that's what is for for a lot of people's comfort. Is what I'd have mostly. Yeah, it's it. it's it's like comfort for a lot of people. It's like it helps. And that's great, but I just don't really get that out of it. So yeah. It's never been for me. Did you did you have religion in your house growing up? Yeah, yeah. From he's heavily Catholic. You're heavily Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So did you like you did all the ceremonies that I would have mm-hmm. gone through, like communion? I was altar boy. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. Um, never got touched though. <laughs> same. Never got touched. <laughs> never got touched. Um, but like fucking ter- ter- terrible thing. Yeah, ca- Catholicism in Ireland, and I, I presume around the world actually. Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Like fucking hell, like. Mm. Some fucking dodgy shit went on, like, and it's um, I can see, like, it's for me, to be honest, Dan, I'm like, I'm, v- I'd be very spiritual, I'd be very yeah. like, I'd be the exact opposite to you, mm. you know, uh, but I find, isn't it great to, I just think that's great that uh, years ago you couldn't even say that, you couldn't say what you said, yeah, you know, and you, but like you'd be ost- ostracized, particularly in in a, in a Catholic country, like, yeah. Um, so no, it's interesting, but I, I always thought agnostic, uh, there, there was a spiritual uh, mm. ligament in it. There's, I understand why that would seem like part because a lot of people are like that, but you don't have to. Yeah. You can also believe enough in it, be agnostic. So, when you die, yeah, are you just food for the earth? Yeah, you're just gone. <laughs> you're gone. Your consciousness is gone. Yeah. So you think, okay. This is interesting. I, d- I didn't expect this conversation. Out. If I did, <laughs> I would have had a load more questions. I'm only fucking just like coming right off the hip because I think it's. I think it's a very, if you don't mind me saying, it's a very bleak mm. uh, existence to have that mindset. And it could very well be the correct. You could be very well. Yeah. Right. To me, it's kind of like, like oh, I don't really worry about that stuff. Yeah. It's not really something that I care about a lot. If I, I'm pretty sure that when I die, it's just gonna be gone and over. And at that point, I'm not gonna care anymore. Yeah, I'll be turned off. Like, <laughs> yeah, we switched up. Yeah, so like this. Uh, what the, uh, what's, what's the idea of reincarnation to you? Like, <sighs> do you think you have a soul? So no, no, I don't believe in really? souls. No, I don't believe in souls. So you don't believe in signs, you don't believe in magic, you don't mm-hmm. believe in ghosts after no, life. No, I think we had this conversation before. I'm, I'm, I'm very much in not interested. It's just to me, it's something I don't care about. It's Amazing. Fine, Amazing. <laughs> so that's how you are spiritually, so yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, li- I, li- I, like, I like to be nerdy about shit like video games and yeah. <laughs> know, know all the Pokemon and shit like that instead of being into crystals to me that's my relief nerdy shit yeah that's how i get my safety and my comfort i get into something really nerdy for a while yeah and i suppose when you think about it that's that's what we all that's what we all have like i mean mm. like for me now like i love i love having crystals yeah and I, every one of those has a meaning to me and every like i remember and I, that's not even a crystal that's just a stone <laughs> right that i picked <laughs> when i was doing a walk above in the valley horrors with a good friend of mine conspiracy john Mm. And we had a just a one of these, one of these just absolute magical days in nature for hours. On but shrooms? No, oh. no shrooms. Maybe a bit of weed. We might be smoking, <laughs> smoking a bit of weed, maybe, but no shrooms. And we went on this epic walk, and we're talking like kind of like yourself. With, with like, there is therapy in that when you're having, when you talk to someone. Yeah. 
you know talk to a friend like that there is therapy in that actually I've forgotten about that but that's that stone and I, I, I don't know I, I do think you you can find solace from every everyday life in things that don't have to be religious yeah um, no I, I fully get it yeah. so me that's just my solace I am I like to just get get like in get nerdy about a topic or like fucking get into this for a while you know what are you most nerdy about <laughs> I really like board games, but I really like board games and card games. That's a huge hobby of mine. What board game? Uh, well, recently I've been a bit nerdy about chess, and I've been looking up stuff about chess. That's why it's in my head, but sometimes I look stuff about... Shout out Settlers of Catan, if anyone's ever played that. That's a great game. Stuff have you like ever played that. Risk? I never have, but I really want to. I, I have really want to. Yeah, I, I should play game Risk sometime. I'm yeah. way into that. Risk is fucking unreal. It, um, it's a brilliant game. Brilliant game. Mm. Stra- uh, strategy game. Um, and I'm hoping to have a game here in the John Hume War Room with uh, Dominic and Sully soon. So yeah. I invite you along. Ah, oh, do it, man! Yeah. I'd love to. That, you need what you need is you need someone who knows the rules intrinsically and likes to be. Do you know when when you play Monopoly? Yeah, it has to be a banker. Yeah. So there needs to be kind of a banker in risk, mm. and I'm not that person. Yeah. I'm a participant. Mm. I'm a, I'm the person that wants to win the game but not give out the money and yeah yeah fuck like, that like, 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 you know, uh, that's a that's a that's a job for a beta male but some people <laughs> a beta male i fucking what's a beta male i bait the fucking male i bait the hell what's a beta male that's just my accent excuse me <laughs> did you say beta male? i i tried to but i fucked up what is a beta I couldn't male I thought it this means nothing. Just oh, stupid just, I, thought, term. I, I thought it was like um, I was joking, like. I sorry. I thought it was like because you're like you educate me all the time. Yeah. On these new, but you know, like alpha and beta males, and people talk about that. And oh yeah, so like a female male, like is this? Uh, yeah, yeah, a female male. <laughs> 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 that is that's uh, <laughs> that implies women are like worse than men. <laughs> <laughs> it implies women are different to men. It's a, it's a, it, it's like the, the it, it, none of this is real. This is all bullshit. But you know how people like there's alpha, alpha wolves and better oh, wolves, yeah, yeah. submissives and dominance. Like all of this is bullshit. But I like making fun of it. Yeah. Because stupid people believe it. Like that. That's that's interesting. Um, that, that that I do find that interesting when we're, we're talking. When you you're putting thing, you like to put things into categories. Mm. And I like things that are in categories. Because it's like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Oh, that's what that is. You're very good at it. And I'm like, I'm always fascinated about it. Like, and, that, and we're going to talk about that on today's podcast in a minute. Like, like for, for me, I'm 45. You're 26. Mm. You know, there's a big age gap between us. <laughs> See, the whole like making fun of the alpha beta thing is pretty popular with my demographic. It's your demographic. Yeah. Myself, like, what's beta? Yeah. If you walk up to a community manager, you call them an alpha, they're going to lose their shit. <laughs> what is it? Alpha bad? Alpha, no, alpha is supposed it, because it, it, it's really stupid. It's like a lot of men will call themselves alphas to feel like they're like the big men around, you know, like okay. oh I'm alpha, you go so I go to the gym every day. But like that's really stupid. So people yeah. take the piss out of it all the time because it just when means I, you have a small cock, really. If you if you have a small, well, <laughs> that's I'm just what it means. You have a small cock and no, you're compensating. And if, if you're a, if you're a beta, then you've got a beta. <laughs> you got a beta. Oh oh, what are they called? You love this, and then there's the sigma males. The sigma. That's males. the most laughable ones. What they're the funny. Fuck is they're sigma funny. Male. Sigma males are like people will say this about themselves. They'll be like, I'm a sigma male, and a sigma male is someone who's intelligent like a beta, but he's manly like an alpha. <laughs> I'd love to be a sigma male. That's who I want to be now. I want to look like like who give me like I don't want to look like a wrestler like hmm. like fucking Brad Pitt in Fight Club, <laughs> all right. But then I want to have That's like Sigma male, yeah. But <laughs> but I want to have Matt Damon's in intellect from Goodwill yeah. Hunting, you know, like a genius, but like down to earth at the same. This time. This is pretty Gen Z stuff. It is the Sigma male. That's a Sigma huge male. a huge uh, joke going around right now. People call themselves Sigma males. So like take the piss. <laughs> There's a beta. Alpha and Sigma, and a Sigma is basically the best of Beta and the best of Alpha. Yeah. So what would you be if you were the worst of Beta and the worst of Alpha? <laughs> the alphas are all always good. Alphas are all Alpha, you know. And Betas are like the the little weak little men who sit in their living rooms and record podcasts, you know. Those what people. Are you talking about, <laughs> <laughs> Just I show you my five gram ra- or my five <laughs> fucking kg weights over there, boy. And my yoga mat. <laughs> that I bought in London. Better, no, better no, mail so the sort of guys who, who organize a day to play Risk together. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, we got to get a kidder and we got to yeah, make that gotta game play of Risk happen. Yeah. So you're into board games. Yeah, class. That, that was what we talked about. I'm mm. into, into board games a lot. Amazing. And I spend too much time on the internet as well. That helps. That's therapeutic for me. 
Yeah, I, I suppose it's the it's the way of the young man yeah. now, as opposed to when I was your age. It, I it was different. It was different. Technology was only kind of coming on board. I'm very I'm very delighted because I feel like I grew up with it from an early age, so I'm very good at self self administering the internet you know kind of like self dosing like I like watching like a few long YouTube videos about some nerdy topic and then I'm like that was nice and then I can just turn I can turn the group off for a bit as well and just fucking write or something but it helps me unwind you know yeah so you're, you've got control of the internet nah, you've got control of technology I, I'm just your generation er, find it easier to control technology yeah I can get a lot out of it like okay. that's kind of what I mean I, I guess yeah. I feel like it's become part of a habit now of like before like when I was really young I was like 12 I, I was like proper like internet addicted for a while like I, I lived in a tiny village with nothing you know and you'd have the internet and be like whoa what is this yeah, there's so much yeah but like in, in the meantime like nowadays it's become something really relaxing for me mm. to just have like this hour I'm gonna do nothing I'm gonna watch a YouTube video about the history of whales yeah. and I'm just gonna learn about what happened in Wales <laughs> I fucking love that man yeah. I, 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 I love I, I've lately been doing a lot of you just YouTube is great yeah man. YouTube is fantastic it's like why do you need television if you have YouTube you know? <laughs> paying for RTE when you can have anything in the world like yeah. you can put it in any topic and it'll just spring it up the yeah. best of whatever it is uh, trending topics with Cornelius Patrick O'Sullivan. I, I, I can't. Don't worry. I am short-sighted. I can't oh. read that anyway. Hashtag <laughs> Ireland's full. Oh no! Fuck this. Yeah, man. This I is told a horrible you, topic. When I was writing these earlier on, I was like, "Whoa! I'm definitely putting this down." This. Oh, uh, I hate this shit so much. Hashtag man. Ireland's full. Speaking about darkness, this is darkness. I fucking. This is dark. I. But this is what's fucking trending. I know. On the computer that you have control over, that like other people don't have control of, and see this. This is the sort of thing I'm into it and fucking consume it. Yeah. And then bring it into their body, and the only way they can get it off is by putting it into a crystal. <laughs> 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 that is like that's the sort of thing <laughs> that I'm glad I know the internet well enough to not read it too often. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I get curious. I'm like, oh, I know this full. I know what it is. I know it's gonna be fucking racist garbage. But I click into it anyways, and then I read that for like ten minutes, and I lose all my faith in humanity. Yeah. Like, it's wild. You walk away so sick from yeah. stuff like that. Sick man. Oh. What does the hash? No, you know, I only prepared this this uh, interview today very yeah. very scantily just before you came on, and like I gave you the topic last week, what we're gonna be talking about or yeah. what we wanted to discuss on. But like I literally did not know what was trending until I went on today. So what does that hashtag mean to you? Hashtag Ireland is full. As a German living in Ireland. As I think it's the new um, I think it's the new propaganda line that the Irish right wing is going with. That's the new thing. Like mm. All right wing politics is always you find a propaganda line that you can stir up hate with. That's the whole thing. You find something. Something that's going to inspire as much hate as possible and you just push that for a while. That's every time. Yeah. I think that's what right now they're trying to make people believe that the housing crisis is the fault. That's it's about the housing crisis being the fault of the refugees, which is obviously bullshit. When half the government is full of landlords, but ah, it's, we need to talk about that. It's the refugees coming over. Mm. <laughs> it's not the fact that we're ruled by landlords. That's fine. Mm. Or the fact that there's been a housing crisis for as long as I've been alive. Yeah, because eighty percent of your parliament owns fucking houses. Yeah. It's insane. It should be illegal. What should be illegal? Shouldn't be allowed. That you as as a TD, because the biggest one of the biggest lobbying groups in Ireland is also the Landlord Association. So a huge part of the government is members of the biggest lobbying group in Ireland. That's one group dedicating all policy yeah. on the topic of housing. Like that's fucking unbelievable. That's not democracy. That's just fascism. But, like. but there's no fucking demo democracy really. Like, come on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like at the like first of all, there isn't like I mean. That's why it should be legal. It's like I I completely agree with you. I think yeah. if you're in government, I think why do you need two houses? I actually think. Sorry, now let me let me redefine my thoughts on this. I think if you're earning enough money, you should be allowed to have a holiday home. Yeah, of course. Right. I, if you're earning enough money and you work hard enough and you've got a skill or you've got whatever, and a politician should also. But I think that's it. There's nobody needs three homes. It's when it comes. It's I don't even care if someone has three homes. The it's always the smallest, most evil group of people that does the most damage, right? Always, it's the people who own like lending companies, renting companies, who buy as much property as possible, yeah. and then make make a business out of trying to get the most money out of it. Yeah, them. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and those people sit in government like it's, it's wild. Yeah, no, it's fucking. 
had, yeah, that's a fucking it's a it's a tough one then like and it's and like that's then it, Ireland's, Ireland's full, right? full hashtag Ireland's full like that's the attempt to blame that on refugees because then they don't need to change anything and they can keep doing yeah. what they're doing. We can't house our own. Yeah, we can't. You see it yourself, Dan. When we're above in the streets there, and fucking in Coco, like I, I mean, I, I like often I go. You know, I'm on Patrick Street or I'm walking down any one of the streets in Cork, down mm. around Castle Street or from Corn Market Street, and there's people just fucking, like, especially at Christmas, I remember I was going to get my car out of, um, out of a car park, and it was fucking freezing, man. Yeah, yeah. And there's people there huddled into the fucking corner of a shop front with a sleeping bag. Yeah. And trying to, trying to get like fucking five or six hours sleep. And that's terrible too. That's that's again that's something that could be fixed if Ireland had a housing first policy on home a ho- on uh, social housing, which they don't because What's it's the a homelessness like in Germany. Uh, it's it's a little less. We still don't have a housing first policy. The only country with a housing first policy is Austria, which has no homelessness. What is that policy? The housing first means that if you go to social services and you're homeless, before you have to do anything else, you immediately get a house. And that's why a lot of homeless people stay homeless because they are something like attract- they're addicted to heroin, for example. So they go and they get their house, which you can still do under the Irish social system, but then you can't get off the heroin because you're fucking addicted. You've done this for the last 18 years. You can't stop. So you fall back. Boom, you've lost your house. You've lost your social services. Now you're on the street again. And then you have to reapply. In Austria, you just get your house. That's it. You have it now. Here's the keys. Bam. But what... Okay, so what people will say then is like, what's the incentive for buying a house then? If you just say, yeah, I'm homeless. The, you don't own the house you just fucking you live uh, first of all Austria has council housing blocks that use for it right okay. they have these really nice fancy council housing blocks and you can just go and live in there if you need somewhere to live the only incentive why you don't want to live in there is because bumfuck of nowhere like fucking four hours away from the next city you know Yeah. it's just kind of like a housing block somewhere in the country and they have supermarkets there they have gyms there like it's generally just a place where you can just go and live and that's where they, a lot of the homeless people in Austria just immediately got housed so there's like communities of homeless people housed out in they're the They're not homeless. They're, Austria hasn't had real homeless homelessness for like fucking the last 30, 40 years now. Why are people not talking about this model? Because, because the party, the only reason this happened is because Austria was ruled for 25 years by the Austrian Socialist Party. And they had, were 25 years in power so they could build these big council blocks. Wow. And, and no one power in Austria now. Uh, now it's a liberal conservative party, but they can't undo this anymore. It's yeah. The change is so good, everyone loves it, yeah. and no one's to talk about it because it was a socialist party that made the progress. And the number one agenda of like most political media is to always never use the socialism word, no matter when. Yeah. Keep it down. That's bad. Socialism, so- socialism works. Yeah. Like socialism is for fucking for the good of people like it is most of the time yeah but people like to fucking focus on <laughs> on a few historical times where it wasn't <laughs> mm, yeah well i suppose you could point a finger at that yeah hashtag eurovision uh eurovision it's oh no oh, sorry just i before know why it's trending actually just before we move on, on. there's one thing i want to say about ireland you were asking me about my spirituality i'm just full no 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 one thing and i just want to say there's one thing about refugees because i think it's really important to say do it and it was such a nice beautiful example today please the whole refugee thing to me can be perfectly summed up in uh when your son earlier asked uh, who are refugees right yeah the logic behind why you help them is so simple every kid i've heard kids ask the question before it's they understand immediately who are refugees they're people in trouble and they need help and every kid immediately is like ah yeah that makes sense i've never never seen that a child has not understood that principle immediately and then it's adults who grow up and they get cynical and they get they get jealous and they have other problems then suddenly they don't understand that simple like ethical thing anymore someone needs help we have help we help them yeah i think that's the most that's the thing that always is at the core of it for me you know it's just a human thing it is a human thing yeah it is and um like the, and myself and noel did a podcast there recently where we were mm. talking about this and uh i think sometimes people get overwhelmed with the help and they're not being able to help to a, a like like to a high degree like like yeah. straight away if you're if you're having an argument we'll say with someone who is we'll say who would agree with that farm, farmer hashtag right if you're having an argument with them they'll throw back why don't you take them in yeah. why don't you take them in and myself and Noel were wrestled with that particular um, argument. And um, the the formula we or not the formula, but the the point of view that we now take in it, or that uh, I that I know she's and 
we both have this opinion is you might be able to take someone in but you can show compassion mm. and you can show caring and loyalty and help yeah. in different forms and just because you're not able to put someone into your house like we've, we we're making the argument that like we've got an autistic child mm. we also have a three year old child and you know we might have spare rooms but we're not comfortable with bringing a stranger into the house mm. but we'd love to help those strangers in other ways why can't we do it like I don't understand if it's, uh, it's black or white with the that's it like yeah, and it's, it's not black and white, white. It's fucking grey yeah. and pink and purple. Shouldn't we just? Why can't we just get together as a society and just help them together? Why does it have to be? Like, yeah, you take some in, then you take them. Isn't this something we can fix together? Because yeah. we're all fucking human beings. Yeah. We're all on the same side. I like the Austria model, man. Yeah, that's like Austria. It's one of the model. greatest things about Austria. I mean, like it almost wipes out the Hitler vibe. Like <laughs> 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 that's why they. W- that's why they went so hard left. You know, <laughs> that's why it? they went so half left immediately. Because yeah. like they were like, yeah, okay. Oop- <laughs> oops. <laughs> oopsie. <laughs> oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Eurovision. Uh, why is it trending? Tell me. So, it is trending, right? Well, this is why I think it's well, for, for the <laughs> Ireland are having their heats at the moment, mm. right? So you had to submit a song if you wanted to be considered, and then it's whittled down to about like maybe ten or twelve songs, yeah. and then those songs are played uh, over a, a variety of weekends, like a kind of a. X Factor type kind of show and then yeah. you, there's one winner and that winner then goes on and represents us in the final, right? Okay, so one of the entrances uh, or the, one of the entries this year that has been whittled down into the things is a song by Johnny Rotten mm. who sings, Johnny Rotten is singing it himself. Do you know Johnny Rotten, the lead singer of the Sex Business? Yeah. Who sang, God save the Queen! Yeah. He is down to the last nine or ten uh, for a song for the to represent Ireland in a song that he wrote. Is he Irish? And the song is called Hawaii. He's or but he's born in London, right? But his mother's from Cork. His father's <laughs> from Galway. Okay. And I only found this out recently. Um, and I, when I saw it, I, when I saw it uh, trending, I was like, "Well, that could be, it's a nice little thing to talk about because it'll still be uh, relevant." But like, so he's the song he wrote is called Hawaii, mm. right? So he's an English singer singing about a uh, singing about a fucking. Island off the coast of America, oh, okay. America, uh, in the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. Um, but uh, the song then is this is and this is I was all against it, right? Yeah. All, I was like, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah. You're fucking English. Fuck this shit. Blah blah blah. And then uh, I found out that the song then is about his wife and uh, who has dementia, and it's like and then they played a bit of it and it's actually beautiful. Yeah. And there's real emotion in it, and I was like, wow, and okay. like. Yeah, so that's what's trending. That's that makes sense. See, I I thought where this was going is that you're gonna say, uh, you know, the Queen is dead, Sex Pistols, Johnny Rotten, he's on the last two, three, and he, he made like a song celebrating that the Queen died or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> well, I was thinking then, could, could it be an, an an elaborate ruse by Johnny Rotten, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna fucking write this song about my wife, and I'm gonna fuck, and then when I get onto the Eurovision Song Contest, I'm gonna go fuck. The Queen, <laughs> 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 you know, or something like that. Where you have because it's a there's a massive audience for the Eurovision Song Contest, yeah, yeah. man. It's I love Eurovision, man. Do you love it? I yeah? love Eurovision, of course, of course. I love all the big European events. Big you, fan. Like you're not really renowned as great singers, the Germans. Ah, uh, we have won a few. We have won like two. Have you won two? Did you? Yeah, we had like what is it? Satellite by by Lena Meyer Landrut. Like a satellite, no. Great. It attempt. was a huge hit in Germany for like years, but nowhere else in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> David Hasselhoff was big in Germany, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I bring it back to that. You, you're not great taste, maybe. Um, uh, that's fine. Hashtag Kerry. Hashtag Kerry. That's trending. Oh. Kerry's trending for some reason. Oh, Kerry is trading because of the stabbing. Yeah, that's why it's Shut trending. Up. This is also racist stuff. Yeah, yeah. There was um, there was uh, a fight and there was a knife fight in a refugee hostel in Kerry. What? That's why it's trending. Yeah, and because it was a crime committed in a refugee hostel, uh, people are when now. When I wrote down hashtag Kerry there, I was like, oh, this will be a nice one to end no. because we run a comedy club no. in Killarney, and no. I was like, oh, we could talk about the comedy club and Americans coming there. There's a f- what? No, there's this is a really it's a really bad thing right now. They're going like really crazy on the anti-refugee stuff on Twitter in Ireland. Like, re- it's really popular right now because there was a crime in a refugee hostel in Kerry. Like, two refugees had like a knife fight because they're both criminals, and now. Uh, people are using those two people that one example to go on twitter and be like 
every refugee is a criminal. They're sending us their criminals. Hashtag carry. Like that thing. Fuck. I don't even yeah. want to talk about that anymore, man. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Well, anyways, you want a comedy club and carry? Yeah. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> Not open at the moment. Okay, so I've got three questions for you, Dan, right? Three mm-hmm. questions. You know what the questions are. And uh, we've already kind of touched on it there earlier on. Uh, with little kind of sub genres of people but i always find it hilarious when i do something and you start laughing at me because like i might have like done a story on instagram Mm. and put up the wrong like change the filter or put up a done something incorrect and and like like oh what like sorry can i hold your crystal for this i need to like get into your energy get into my energy i need to understand you for this you've you've asked me there no you've asked me so i'm learning i'm giving you i'm giving you permission (laughs) but what i'm trying to say to you is you'll always laugh and you're like oh you're such a boomer ah you're such a gen x Ah." and i've i don't really know what these titles are so i have three questions for you and the first question is what am I? So you think I'm Gen Z? That's my generation, is it? No, you're Gen X. That's your generation. So you're I think Gen by Z. Definition. You're a Gen because Z. Because I, I think there's two meanings to both those words. It's the meaning that we kind of, with the stereotypes, we're like, this is a Gen Z thing, this is a boomer thing, and then there's like the literal definition of, I'm a boomer because uh, everyone <laughs> born after 1996 until like 20, was it 2010, is is a Gen Z? I I, I, I yeah, don't know. I think so. The first question I have for you is, what is a Gen Z? Everyone born between 1996 and 2010. And you were born in 1996? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're a Gen Z. Yeah. So what is a Gen Z? <laughs> uh, every person born. <laughs> <laughs> what characteristics do Gen Z Well, usually have? their birthday falls in between 1996 <laughs> and 2010. Obviously pedantic anyway, is the answer <laughs> to the question. <laughs> All right. They're pedantic fucking dickheads. <laughs> every one of them. You know what I'm trying to say? Well, I'll ask it uh, this time. I'll ask I it in the French accent. What I is a Gen Z? I think Gen Z, the most unique thing about Gen Z is that I think Gen Z is the uh, the most involved generation ever. I think Gen Z is the first generation that's been told from a very young age, hey, your planet is fucked and everything's shit and everything's going downhill from here. Like, I think that's uh, that's something that is very unique to Gen Z. I think Gen Zs are depressed. I think they have loads of mental illnesses. I think Gen Zs are barely dealing with what is being thrown at them and the responsible that's being thrown at them. So you you're kind of self pityful kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't even me? say this much about myself because I'm I'm pretty happy go lucky going through life. But there's a lot of very depressed Gen Z people, and I understand why. Why do you understand why? Do you think the world is fucked? That's. Yeah, Gen Z people are like we learn about climate change from a very young age, and uh, the more you learn about it, the more hopeless it like gets. You know, who's at fault for climate change? Oil companies. Yeah, Chevron Mobile in particular, and uh, their leadership in the sixties. There you go. What did their leadership in the sixties do? They discovered uh, the effects of uh, their oil production on climate change in the sixties. Their company scientists discovered it. And instead of been taking these documents with life-changing information for everyone to the government, being like, this is happening, they burned the documents and they swore the all scientists. the scientists. No, they didn't kill him. That'd be even more evil, but they swore him to, science, uh, to silence and like put him on a huge NDAs and basically killed all the whole project, buried it. And how did it come out in the end? It came out, the CIA found him like fucking 40 years later. But, mm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So there you go. That's I think climate change, Gen Z climate so change. So so yeah. So you're That's a big you're thing. depressed that the world is going to come to an end. But like, wh- what what about the fact that you've never like you've never had a hungry day. You've always had good clothes. You've always had good food. Great education. You know, by and by and large. You maybe know, in the Western the world, but you know. By and large, and I'm talking about I'm talking about the world now that I live in. Like I'm talking about the Western I, world, maybe. Yeah. I don't think people, for example, no. you know, like depression is. Is is I think depression is prevalent all the time. Do you think that people are just depressed now because they, there's impending doom? Like I think it's a generational depression. I think the whole generation is uh, way l- less hopeful. I think there's m- no big dream. There's very little big dreamers in Gen Z. What do you have any dreams? Yeah, I just call myself a dreamer. Yeah, you're but not the only one. I'm not the only one. There's there's <laughs> a few like there's there's people do still have big dreams, big ideas, but I think people have a really easy time just given up do you think that 
you, you could potentially be soft generation got everything handed to you and then when the going nah. gets tough I'm, 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 I'm hypothesi- yeah. hypothesizing here now I'm not, I, this isn't my opinion I know why some people have that sentiment but um, I think that's people who think that should look more inward than outward okay um, and so you're Gen Z mm. okay so what is Gen X and don't give me fucking dates. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me dates I actually time. don't know the dates for this one. Yeah. I didn't prep for this. <laughs> oh, I will telecom the dates. It'll be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm. Well, I, I, Generation X anyway is is uh, after boomers. I think it's after boomers. It's it's. I think it's like uh, mm. seventy five to eighty six or something like that. Yeah, and then after that, there's millennials and then Gen Z. I think. Yeah, and then Generation Alpha is the next one. And Generation Alpha is after mm. Gen the Z. The alpha males, as alpha. we told earlier. So, uh, so I'm Gen X. Mm-hmm. I'm a Gen X, which is, uh, and I did a small bit of reading what a Gen X is in the pub last night uh, on the way home from work. It's in a podcast in the city. And um, basically, they are the end of the, the former generation. So they know what it's like to have, like, you know, no technology, mm. no, um, you know, like, to know what kind of real rural freedom was, which yeah. I definitely know what that was like. I mean, like you literally would be sent out of the house at you know ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you'd come back for your lunch, and then you'd be sent back out. Mm-hmm. You'd come back for your tea, and then you could go back out until nine or ten o'clock, and you come home and you go to bed and you'd rinse, repeat and during the summer. And it was like there was no heightened worry from your mother about where you are and you haven't texted or anything like that. There was no looking at your phone for eight hours a day. Yeah, there was imagination. There was a lot of boredom. Yeah. A lot of boredom. Um, but then they kind of come in then near the back end of, of technology. They say it's the, like, if you look at the TikToks, they're like, they're the best of both worlds. Like, <laughs> not really, because I got to the stage, it was probably too late for me. I, like, I'm not great with technology. A lot of my friends are okay with technology. Yeah. But when I look at you now, for example, you do a lot of the, um, the technical work for the Goku Club and stuff like that. And like, I mean, like, you just, I'd be like, fucking hell, I, there's no way I'd be able to do that. Like, mm. Do you know what I mean? No, no, that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. You don't, like, I, think, I, I, I think, think every generation comes with the strengths and weaknesses. Like, I do think that um, there was plenty of depression and anxiety mm. when I when I was your age. Plenty of it going around. I don't know, is it unique to this generation? I think every generation has a unique trauma yeah. that goes with it. I actually think the Gen X one, at least in our part of the world, I, I, I have a pretty strong contender with what I think the Gen X generation trauma is. It's uh, I think it's child abuse. I think that's the big one. I think Gen X was the oh, first child generation neglect. child neglect, child abuse. It was the f- last yeah. generation where it was just generally okay yeah. to like be your child and stuff. Yeah. After that, it became not okay anymore. Yeah. But like, I think I, I think that's a good point, and I think that would mm. that that's why it makes your one a little bit more unique. Not not any worse or not any better because like yeah. trauma is fucking trauma. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I do think every generation. I think it's part of life. Yeah. Fucking her pain, misery, hardship, love, joy, mm. happiness, emotions. It's all fucking part of the experience. I, I love that about Generation X in particular, though. I think that's a really good precedent that everyone in Gen X kind of like huge parts of Gen X, I would estimate, have been beaten as children, right? Have been victims of child abuse, mostly at the hands of their parents. That shit became not OK very quickly. Like when Gen X raised their children, suddenly it became a lot less like yeah. now now it's not publicly accepted anymore you know yeah yeah i think that's the great thing that happened over the last generation You're that was a very quick movement as well that happened welcome, very quickly yeah. yeah yeah my generation kicked ass yeah, yeah. well didn't <laughs> well i'm i still beat mine but you know yeah i want to bring it back actually you want to bring it back <laughs> Move them all off to Austria into the houses. <laughs> Get into those houses there. We're going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> the Austrians don't mind. They say we could stay. Uh, it became re- it become retro. It became cool again. So the last question then is, what is the difference between Gen X and Gen Z? What is the difference like? What is the difference between you and me culturally? Not even culturally, like, but like just true gener- generationally. What is it? Because I, I look at, like we're comedians. Yeah. Right? And I think, I think age doesn't matter when you're a comedian. Like I often will talk to like I'm, I like I'll use Gary Lynch as an example, a comedian mm. in Dublin who's late fifties. I see him as the same fuck on the same pedestal as myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I talk. I'll talk to you. I'll see myself in the same pedestal as you. And when you step out of that vernacular, then I'm a forty-five-year-old dad yeah. with a mortgage and a marriage and and kids, and you're a twenty-six-year-old kid with a girlfriend and mm. video games. Do you know we shouldn't be in this room talking together in any other <laughs> industry. Do you know what I mean? 
But I, I suppose, like, I'm interested to know what is the generational differences between between you know, us. I'd actually say that um, there's probably less generation difference between Gen Z and Gen X than there. I would, I, I would generally just from my own feeling, I feel like there's less of a difference than with any other generation before. Mm. I feel like especially because of the internet and people are connected now and people don't live in their little bubbles anymore. I feel like it's getting very close. Like, yeah. Uh, like, uh, t- you said earlier, you saw a TikTok on, about Gen Xers. Like, that would be, when I was first starting using the internet, seeing anyone who wasn't a Gen Z, who wasn't like 16 or young on the internet, was like unthinkable. Yeah. That never happened. Yeah. Like, and that's all bridged now. Yeah, I suppose. That's all bridged. Uh, yeah, I think that technology definitely mm. has um, minimized the age gap. All right. Yeah. Because, like, what... Yeah, no, that is, that, is, that is true. That's true. Even with my own son, like, I often find that, mm. you know, I have a much, di- I have a much different <laughs> relationship with, we'll say, Dylan than my father has with yeah. me. Yeah. You know, and there's the same age gap. There's the same age difference. Whereas I feel me and my father are miles different. Yeah. And I don't even really know him. The way I know Dylan. Yeah. I'm not saying that I know Dylan either. You know yeah. I mean? But I, you know. So it's weird, man. It's I weird. give I give you a specific one. Uh, just from what I see online, I think Gen X people. I think you guys like uh, you like you like uh, you like the like emotional, inspirational stuff on on uh, Instagram a lot. I love I think it. It's Gen, uh, yeah, I think in Gen X people, they love the motivation, inspiration. Love it. Dog saves owner from car or something like that. And there's like big emotional music, and Gen yeah. X like just make me cry. Love it. I'm Gen a crier Z- though. I'm a, I'm a fucking. <laughs> I am a crier. Like I I'm an emotional motherfucker. Like I can't. But I, I, do you know what? I fucking don't mind that either. I don't yeah. mind that. I don't mind that. It like, and I think cr- crying is a sign of strength as opposed to weakness. Like, even though, you know, if it was in a fight now when I last and I was crying, uh, that would be weakness. That's that's <laughs> my big difference between Gen X and Gen Z. Is you guys like the emotional stuff, and Gen Z likes uh, arguments, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> friction. They're like more confrontation. Yeah. I, I hate confrontation. Uh, if they saw a video of a dog saving a guy from being run over, the Gen Z comment would be like, no, let him get run over. He said Wait. the N word on Twitter five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I think th- that might be a difference. Is like, w- have you ever been in a f- have you ever been in a fight? Uh, only as a kid. Only in like not uh, not in school after the age of fourteen, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Whereas <clears throat> there would have been a lot of scraps now growing up. Yeah, there was loads of, at school. Loads yeah. at school, but there after. Did you win those fights? Well, I think they mostly got like stopped, or I don't think I ever. I don't think I got ever got beaten up, but I probably lost a couple. Yeah. You've got a karate back background as well, like. Yeah, I don't remember them well enough to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, there was a sandbox in school where people used to meet to fight. So, ladies and gentlemen, crazy. well, we're we calling it here. We're going to call it. This has been a beautiful podcast. Yeah. With Mr. Daniel Lucas, thank you so much. Please follow him on his social media channels, the only funny German, and um, please like, share, and subscribe this podcast. Tell a friend. Tell your auntie. Tell your cousins. Tell your uncles. Tell your nieces, tell your nephews, and get them to tell their next door neighbors. Mm. Pass it on. Tell everyone. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Yep. And this is going to be on YouTube as well. So that's exciting. Brilliant. We love YouTube. Yeah, we love YouTube. We love YouTube. Um, I don't know when this is going to go up, but this, this episode is going to go up next week. But I don't know when it's going to go up on YouTube. It'll Perfect. probably go up in the week after, maybe. Anyway, hashtag to you all. Hashtag Ireland is not full. Hashtag Ireland is wide open. It's wide open. Come on away in. <laughs> Come in. You're C-U-M. Welcome. God bless. <laughs>